So what does the act specifically require for dispensers or pharmacies as we may more commonly know them? So like the other trading partners in the supply chain, dispensers also have to do product tracing, verification, authorized trading partner, and product identification. But I'll, I'll sort of highlight the differences. With product tracing, that means that pharmacies need to have systems and processes in place to be able to accept that transaction information when they purchase product. And they need to hold on to those records for a period of six years. With verification, if dispensers do find a legitimate product, then they will need to um, investigate and properly disp disposition that product as well. Um, oftentimes, they do have to work with other trading partners since they purchase the product from um, a wholesale distributor or manufacturer. But um, in general, um, they will need to ensure that they have a handle on uh, whether they have any illegitimate product within within their possession or not. Uh, then the authorized training partner requirement, they need to make sure that they have their uh, appropriate state licensure. Um, now, there are some uh, other other unique requirements related to dispensers, such as, you know, when they buy product, they need to make sure that they're buying product that is um, has the product identifier on it. At this point, products in the supply chain and that are on the shelves that are um, within the scope of the law should have the product identifier on them. And if you have any questions, you can always um, contact your the, the original manufacturer of the product or even your wholesale distributor to check to whether that should or should not be on the products that you have on your shelves. We're talking about dispensers. That's an important term, and in, in the entire law is kind of constructed around those various sectors, manufacturer, wholesaler, dispenser. Uh, maybe just a couple of things to, to highlight and emphasize for people around that term. Uh, one, just because you think of yourself as a pharmacy and you traditionally operate as a pharmacy doesn't mean that you are always and only a pharmacy. For example, if you're selling pharmacy to pharmacy and selling it further down the supply chain or to another pharmacy down the street, outside of a couple of you know, specific exemptions like a specific patient need where you're trying to fill that, if you're doing that kind of pharmacy to pharmacy type of selling or borrowing and loaning type of activity, you're really acting in a wholesaler capacity and subject to those requirements that you would be subject to as a wholesaler. Um, the pharmacy term also applies to healthcare practitioners generally who are authorized to dispense and prescribe medications, although I think it's important for them to note that there are significant carve-outs or exceptions in the statute. So those HCPs, healthcare practitioners, are really only subject to that requirement to only purchase serialized product that carries the product identifier, as you said, and to ensure that they're only purchasing from other authorized trading partners. Right. If anybody is confused about what activities or roles or obligations that they have under the DSCSA, FDA has issued a guidance for industry for identifying trading partners under DSCSA, which will help uh, understand what activities you perform, uh, how those activities will put you in a certain trading partner category, and therefore those are the uh, requirements that you need to follow. Uh, but not necessarily duplicate. So the law also recognizes that um, you may um, you may uh, do uh, different types of activities. Therefore, you may have multiple obligations under the law. 